Akira Kurosawa is regarded as one of the greatest filmmakers who ever lived. Partly because of his work on its own, but also because of his staggering influence on cinema. This requires some explanation. In history, there is a concept of a historical keystone. Someone so important to history that if he or she did not exist, history would be massively altered. Most people go through their lives having a small amount of influence on history. Critical to the people around them, but not to the course of human events. Focusing solely on film history and not world history here, if a director is taken out of film history, what is typically lost is that director's films. End of story. If Kurosawa was taken out of film history, not only would his films be lost, but also so many other films that were directly made because of him by other directors. He is one such keystone to his industry. There are many great filmmakers, but Akira Kurosawa is in a unique position in the annals of film history. Not only were so many directors who came after him inspired by his filmography, but his movies have bled into so many other works. In some cases, this has only been in terms of taking characters and techniques from Kurosawa's films and reusing them in other productions, and in some cases, outright remakes, both official and unofficial. Thus, if one claims to have never seen a film by Kurosawa, that can be both true and misleading. For his influence is so wide that even the average moviegoers would have to go out of their way to avoid seeing something that would not have existed without the great director. Kurosawa spent his career filming in Japan, but his effects on cinema were felt, and are still being felt, in the West. His samurai pictures spawned myriad admirers and pretenders, multiplying these samurai in the hundreds. The reasoning behind adapting an Akira Kurosawa film, sometimes without permission, is twofold. Part of the decision must come from the fact that most American audiences have not seen The Hidden Fortress and his other films, which means that the concepts will still seem fresh to them. It is the same line of thinking that brought America a new version of The Office, but that doesn't account for why Kurosawa's films, far more consistently than most other foreign films, are used in American productions. It comes from quality. The examples are numerous, but a fine place to begin is with Yojimbo. Translated as Bodyguard, Yojimbo is the story of a nameless samurai who arrives in a town with two competing crime bosses. He ends up working both sides to his advantage. When asked his name, he gives a false one, helping to popularize the man-without-a-name stock hero in cinema. Yojimbo has been copied in the West many times, but it should be noted that the original film was inspired by the American Western film genre, making this more of a circle of influence. The characters are Western cowboy archetypes, and the shots sometimes ape the way American directors shot cowboy movies with wide shots of the hero. With this in mind, it is no wonder that Yojimbo was remade, without permission, by Sergio Leone as A Fistful of Dollars, an Italian-made western starring Clint Eastwood. The plot mimics Yojimbo so closely that the production company that made Yojimbo successfully sued the production of A Fistful of Dollars. Of course, that did not halt the film, and it was released much to the delight of moviegoers. Yojimbo was remade officially with a more recent film, Last Man Standing, starring Bruce Willis. It takes the initial scene of choosing which town to visit by throwing something on the ground, the basic plot, and a few other details. But where Last Man Standing fails is that it isn't very good. It's not only a bad imitation, it's a bad movie in general. Paying homage to Kurosawa, but not tribute with a strong picture. It's fairly lifeless, and its only claim to fame is its connection with the Japanese director. Moving on, The Hidden Fortress is another film that inspired a generation of filmmakers. Kurosawa had the bright idea to tell an epic story, but through the eyes of two peasants. They are not particularly equipped to handle the great mission, but they meet people along the way who are. Still, we see much of the film through their eyes. It's charming, and it makes The Hidden Fortress that much more human, rather than focusing entirely on powerful heroes. The most famous film that was heavily influenced by The Hidden Fortress would have to be Star Wars. Simply put, Star Wars would not have existed in its final form without The Hidden Fortress. Yes, parts of Star Wars was influenced by old science fiction serials, everyone knows that, and it's fairly obvious, but that's only part of the story. Much of it was lifted directly from The Hidden Fortress. Tahai and Matasichi from The Hidden Fortress were transformed into C-3PO and R2-D2, two characters who would be minor and supporting players in other stories, but actually helped shape the plot for the grand heroes. 
In fact, we meet C-3PO and R2-D2 long before Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, and they are always there assisting the Rebellion, saving Luke, Han, and Leia from the trash compactor, and so on. Also, the wipes to move from scene to scene, the princess, and other tidbits are taken directly from the Japanese film. Although not a true remake, Lucas has acknowledged the influence of The Hidden Fortress on his work. Finally, no discussion of Kurosawa's influence could be complete without mentioning The Seven Samurai. It is the story of farmers who hire seven samurai to defend their village from criminals who want to steal their crops. It is one of the most critically acclaimed and beloved films of all time. So much, in fact, that other filmmakers could not help but use the basic plot in their movies as well. The most famous remake was the American western The Magnificent Seven. Unlike with A Fistful of Dollars, the producers of The Magnificent Seven actually bought the film rights to create this remake. The Magnificent Seven had three sequels, and it also inspired various other movies that borrowed directly from it, like Battle Beyond the Stars and even The Three Amigos, making a parody film starring Chevy Chase a movie inspired by Akira Kurosawa. Let that sink in for a minute. Kurosawa's The Seven Samurai also inspired the Pixar film A Bug's Life. This animated feature is about a bug who must fight other bugs who want to steal his people's food, so he goes off to hire warriors to defend his people. Sound familiar? These are but a few examples of how Western cinema is flooded with Kurosawa's influence. Kurosawa's Rashomon influenced Iron Maze, Vantage Point, The Usual Suspects, and many others. The original 1966 Django was influenced by A Fistful of Dollars, which was, as discussed before, an unlicensed remake of Yojimbo. That means all the official and unofficial sequels to Django, including Quentin Tarantino's Django Unchained, would not exist without Kurosawa. The list could go on and on, so to avoid exhaustion, those will do for now. To summarize, seemingly every American film studio has used ideas from the Japanese director, from New Line to Disney. Kurosawa's work in and of itself is worthy of reverence, but the way that his films so directly influenced others in the West is inspiring. When Kurosawa made a movie, it was like dropping a stone into a lake and watching the ripples touch everything else. Station to pick up some power converters.